Hello and welcome to Cooling the Ball in the post truth apocalypse. I'm Ben and as always I'm hanging out with Mike. Hello. Claire. Hey. And Pete still hasn't left. So he's hey. here too. <laughs> still here. Today is a movie episode, so we're going to talk about the Netflix. Is it just purely Netflix? I believe it's... so. Yes, it's a Netflix. It's a Netflix original. Oh, is it? Or did they just buy it? It was meant to come out of the cinema. Either way, it's called Don't Look Up, and we're going to talk about that yep. shortly. And the themes. We'll get into it more, but I'm just going to say that it's a very opinionated movie about the state of our society. I think is the right thing to say. Throws a lot of issues out Throw, there. Yeah, throws a lot of issues. Rustled a few feathers, doesn't it? There That's might, why if you've not watched good it, review. If, if you've not watched it, there might be a few spoilers, so be aware. <laughs> yeah, but if you haven't watched it, I don't know why the fuck you listen to this. Go and watch it, come back and listen to us. Makes sense. But first, before we get into that, let's go through some new and returning listeners. I'll pick out the best, most interesting names of the ones that jump out at me. Black Mountain, North Carolina. Surprise, that hasn't been a fucking thing to rename that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Grand Rapids, Michigan, Windsor in the United Kingdom. Wonder if that's Prince Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> well, that nonce listening to us. No, we don't. Fuck off, Andy. Frankfurt and Maine in Germany, Jakarta, Indonesia. Oh, what's that one? Uh, Kursel in Belgium. Like Birmingham, then. <laughs> Warsaw in Poland. Shrewsbury in the United Kingdom. That's the posh place up the road from us. Shrewsbury, if you're in. Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury, if you're really posh. No, Owen in Shrewsbury. Or you're from there. Sedona in Arizona, Tapa in Estonia, Telford, United Kingdom, our hometown, Bengaluru in India, you're always there or thereabouts, mate. Boardman, Oregon, Guadalajara, Spain, and Ashburn, Virginia. Top, we must just listen to our back catalogue. We're very grateful. We are. Hope you enjoy. Indubitably. Tony friends. Cheers. Thank you. If you've got any. If not, just tell random people in the street. <laughs> Shout it out. Yeah. Walk around with a big banner. Yeah, with a picture. One on the front, one on the back. Sandwich board, the end is now. You listen to Cutting to the Bullet and the post with the front Exactly. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> so, let's get into the movie then. And I'm gonna spoil I'm gonna spoil it by summarising it. Two astronomers, played by Jennifer Lawrence and Leonardo DiCaprio, discover a comet heading directly for Earth. It is larger than the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs and is expected to end human life on the planet and it's going to arrive in six months and 14 days. That's correct. Yeah, they reckon it originated in the Oort cloud. Yes, which is where all the asteroids are born. Yeah. From the outer rim of our galaxy. Is that correct? <laughs> <Rim>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. The last time it was in this position in the sky was before human civilization. That's how long it takes to orbit the sun. Wow, so he's over talking over 100,000 years. Yeah. Is human civilization 100,000 or 10,000? I think from um, evolution, like from our forms through like Neanderthal, Homo sapien, and all that. I, I think, think, think civilization is considered 10,000. Oh, right, okay. Wasn't it? All right, okay. So we're going back to ancient Greece then, really, aren't we? That yeah, way back before that. Samaria? Yeah. Goza? Samaria. Babylonian. And when trying to determine. The velocity and orbit of the comet, Professor Mindy, is he called? Not a good name for a main character. Because <laughs> no. I kept thinking of Mork all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. He realises it's on a collision course with the Earth. I like that scene because he does it, the, calculate, the same calculation three or four times and it ends up as a zero with a line through it. Yeah. And, 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 he it, out and, he it out. and he does it again and it's like, oh shit. And Everybody he does it again. <laughs> he dismisses the students, doesn't he? Because he, he knows... We'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> But Jennifer Lawrence's character, Kate Diabatsky, something like that, isn't it? Yeah, D- Kate. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Kate Diabatsky, it's, it's not like this Polish sounding name, isn't it? Diabatsky. The comic's called the Diabatsky comic, which I'd kind of want if I discovered it. I'd want it. It's like, it's coming towards you, it's got my name on it. Here but comes this, the Carter. But at the same time, <laughs> no one's going to be around to fucking remember it, are they? No, because no, it's five to ten kilometres wide. That's an issue. <laughs> it's a big issue. It's like a billion or something Hiroshima's or something silly or Yeah, it's we've got an article on it later we're gonna read about the impact of something like that into the earth. Oh should we do it now? Yes, why not? What would happen if an asteroid ten kilometres across hit the earth, the beginner version? <laughs> the big Basically right? simplified, I'm assuming yeah. that means. <laughs> Now, an asteroid 10 kilometres in diameter, it doesn't matter where it hits. Ocean or dry land, remember that the deepest point in the oceans is the Mariana Trench, and that's only 11 kilometres deep. And a typical speed for meteorites is 30 kilometres per second. Let wow. that sink in. 
Don't let Richard. Fast. Don't let Richard Hammond drive that. He'll crash it. Uh, and yeah, that's quite tank- mind blowing. It is, isn't, isn't it? Thirty kilometers per second. Yeah. And that's going through <laughs> space at that speed as well, isn't it? Yeah. An asteroid 10 kilometers across is so massive that it's very hard to slow it down. Unlike smaller meteors, it will not be slowed down much by air friction and it will punch through the atmosphere wow. like it's hardly so it won't even slow. There. Fuck. When it reaches the surface, it will smack into the Earth so hard that it won't matter if it strikes ocean or land. Now, the impact with the Earth's crust will finally stop the asteroid. The energy of the impact will vaporise the asteroid vaporize. and a, vaporize the asteroid and a large amount of Earth's crust, creating a crater more than 100 kilometres across, throwing all of that rock right into the air. Whoa. Some of this debris will be going so fast that it will just fly right out of the Earth's atmosphere and go into orbit around the Earth, whereas most of the debris will rain back on the Earth every part of the Earth, mind, not just near the impact site, it's going to heat the atmosphere until it's like the inside of an oven, triggering forest fires and cooking anything that isn't sheltered underground. Not to mention the big fuck-off earthquake and a hundred metre high tsunami if it hits water. Yeah, because it, it'll displace it, won't it? Mm. Just push it out. Yeah. Well, I'd have thought probably more than a hundred metre tsunami. You're talking probably kilometres. Oh, tsunami. well, just in the film, it's like a mile high, something like that. The mm. tsunamis. That's probably closer to it. If mm. You just, yeah. You're just not yeah, surfing that no, no, you're not. You're not. You're just not. Because you're gonna be coming. super heated for a start. Yeah. yeah. You're just gonna be surfing. You'll be like, "This is amazing! I'm riding the wave of the end of the world!" Ah! And you're on fire. Mm. It's the you, water around you just kind of like boiling. Yeah. Yeah. And if you do manage to and that's survive, all from friction and, and and power, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's it's making the earth shudder with the impact. Well, yeah. just think of the impact blast like the blast from the impact you think what the blast had from Hiroshima yeah, yeah. the impact of that like the, the way the blast goes out shock that, wave like, the shock wave that's the word usually of course, this will be a billion Hiroshima bombs there you go a billion Jesus. times that so that's going the shock wave is going to go around the world yeah. and that's going to take out anything that's standing and you'd think the super heat of that shock wave as well because yeah. the speed it would be travelling Obviously, the faster things are, the speed of the atoms and etc., the hotter it is, isn't yeah. it? So just that alone would melt anything. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah. A mile high tsunamis, magnitude ten to eleven earthquake. So we've never had a ten to eleven earthquake. The highest we've had is like nine point six. We just so, tear the planet in two. Yeah. Wouldn't it? The planet would break before humanity. Our spirit, I mean. If he did manage to survive underground or whatever, he goes on to say, the combination of dust from the impact and soot from the forest fires will remain in the Earth's atmosphere for a year or so, blocking the light of the sun. Oof. So without sunlight, much of the Earth's plant life on land and in the sea will die. Wow, many species of animals, including the human race, if we aren't both lucky and resourceful, will die out, either in the initial catastrophe or in the ensuing years due to lack of food and the general devastation of the environment. So basically, it's nuclear winter, yep. isn't it? It's creating a nuclear winter. And it doesn't matter where you like, build these underground sort of forts or whatever, you can't ever predict what side of the Earth this asteroid, you know, if, if one... No, they do know where it's going to hit, don't they? No, no, I'm just saying, like, let, let's talk in real terms now. Oh, yeah, so if, if I go... in the yeah. movie, let's talk about, like, you know, like now, we don't know... If at what angle it could ever hit us? Well, we might go. Okay, Claire, we're gonna just draw lots, and then the one who pulls a short straw gets a bomb shelter under their house. We'll all go. We'll take our families. We'll make it big enough. I reckon they'll be able stock to, it with food and water. They'll be able to pinpoint it, and then it lands on your head, which we're fucked anyway. <laughs> I think if if we did have one coming towards us, just like them, they could pinpoint where it is going to hit. But when then, it gets closer, certainly. You know, and anywhere close. To the impact, it's gonna the, the ground's gonna shake around this, you know, whatever sort of structure you've got underneath. It's gonna need to be really robust, isn't it? Well, you're talking like meters thick steel, and like concrete. And, concrete yeah. yeah, but if you're rich enough, but you, you'd titanium. Have, you'd have a con. You'd have steel outer, wouldn't you? Hundred yeah. percent concrete inner, and then you have whatever. to be lucky not to be near the blast. If you're near the blast, forget it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. You're just. Vaporized, but you'd hope if it does happen, 
they would just fire some big ass fucking nukes at it and just destroy it before it gets to Earth. And that's the reaction I would like. Well, because we'll that, get... that, that is the only because realistically, might as well put it on my You just keep fucking firing them. It's gonna take it down, isn't it? It's ten kilometers. It's not unspeakable to blow up. Well, the other option is we get Bruce with us and a ragtag mm. bunch of drillers, <laughs> and we go up there and we drill, and then we drop the bomb and we blow it in half. But that is the kind of thing that I think would happen. Well, you'd, you'd be surprised if it did, wouldn't you? There'd really? have to be a mission. There is a mission at the moment. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do the whole start. Double asteroid redirection test. I don't want a test. I want results. Uh, a test. They send it to a an asteroid. The double asteroid redirection test or DART log. I mean, a lot of acronyms mm. in this listener. So bear with us. <laughs> is directed right. by NASA to the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory with support from several NASA centres. Now, DART is a planetary defence-driven test of technologies preventing an impact of Earth by a hazardous asteroid. DART will be the first demonstration of the kinetic impactor technique to change the motion of an asteroid in space. Because that's all you need to do. You don't need to nuke it. No. Because the Earth is going so fast, this is going so fast, you've only got to nudge it a little bit. I've got of course. Right. It's, like it's a trajectory, haven't you? Yeah. It's like a pool ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You've only got to nick it. It's middle pocket. <laughs> yeah. The DART mission is led by the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics thingy and managed under NASA's Solar System Exploration Program at Marshall Space Flight Center for NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office. My God. DART is a spacecraft designed to impact an asteroid as a test of the technology. Its target asteroid is not a threat to Earth, or at least that's what they want us to think. Mm-hmm. It might be after they've nudged it. That's <laughs> a valid point, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. They yeah. nudged it in the wrong direction. <laughs> This asteroid system is a perfect testing ground to see if intentionally crashing a spaceship into an asteroid is an effective way to change its course. Now, should an Earth-threatening asteroid be discovered in the future, although saying that, no known asteroid larger than 140 metres in size has a significant chance to hit the Earth for the next 100 years. And only, but only about 40% of those asteroids have been found. That's as of, of October yeah. 2021. There is one that's very large that is terms is a near miss. Mm. Is and it? I think it's about 10 to 15 kilometres as well. Near miss? It's going to be a near 50,000 miles in space is a near yeah. miss. Remember how fast that cigar one was coming? On a moor. Oh, yeah. On a moor, that's it. Good memory. Well, that's because it was aliens, Claire. Mm. I always remember all things alien related, mm. apart from the probings. <laughs> They're just flashbacks. <laughs> Sometimes erotic flashbacks. <laughs> so basically, Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence, like, we've got to go to the present. And they do contact the NASA guy as well, don't they? Yes, Dr. Oglethorpe. Yeah, weird name for a black guy, gotta say it. Oglethorpe. They were good at coming up with the names. Naming was not their thing in no, those. No, definitely I'll not. give them that. Yeah, the no. general was called General Themes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. That general was fucking great. Yeah. We'll get to him in a second. Yeah. Um, so, so, they go, so they meet Dr. Oglethorpe and General Themes to meet the president, but they're delayed for seven hours. Because mm. they're having a party for someone's birthday. Yeah. <laughs> they stop overnight, mate. They do, because yeah. they, they're told, yeah, come back. But before that, the general gives them some snacks and drinks, doesn't he? And yeah, he yeah, charges yeah. That's like $10, $10, $10. And then she's like, Later on, later on in the film, Jennifer Lawrence, Kate Diabatsky goes into the White House kitchen and she's like, do I have to pay for these? She's like, no, it's a White House. It's free. It's free. <laughs> and, she's always, and that really baffled her. That's what I liked, actually. I love yeah. that that baffled her right up to the end, the very <laughs> end. She's like, why did he charge us? Yeah. <laughs> it's a general. He was taking money. Oh, some money. What's forty dollars going to do? Yeah. I love the fact that they, they kept that as a recurring theme. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Now, the Trump-like president, which is played by Meryl Streep, she initially did as and tried to avoid doing anything about the problem until after the midterm elections and her scandal. Because she's trying to get a... That Texan sheriff made a Supreme Court yeah. judge. But it turns out that he's a bit of a perv, and he? he was doing nude modelling and became aroused all the time. <laughs> he was in a softcore porn film, and they were having an affair. Yeah. yeah. So when that broke, she's like, well... Before they turn her down, they do. They like she turns them down. I like turning. It's like you know, it's gonna be a hundred percent chance of impact. 
Some staff member says, can't we just call it a potentially significant event? Uh, yeah, that's so political, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. She's like, but it isn't potentially going to happen. It is going to happen. It's 99.78%. They're like, oh, so it's not 100%. And the president's like, call it 70% and move on. <laughs> <laughs> it's alternative facts. It was draw dropping, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That Reminds me of that alternative me. facts thing that... No, oh, the Trump thing. No, it wasn't... No, well, this happened. No, no, yeah. that, you said this. No, no, it's an alternative fact. And you're like, well, what the fuck is an alternative fact? An alternative fact is a lie, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But that's the way they spin this now. Yeah. They go on television to try and warn the country. On a very odd show, I thought. Not the show that I'd expect them to go on. It's like a politics... Like light news. Light news, light politics, celebrity gossip... The Daily almost, Rip, isn't it? Almost the, like yeah. Russell Howard's Good News or something. Yes. You know, in, a, in a roundabout way, but done in a cheesy American way. You know, oh no yeah. No offence, they... Americans. <laughs> Some of your shows are cheesy. But, yeah. <laughs> now, Kate goes on there and she's like, they can't get through to these two presenters that this is going to happen and we're all going to die unless we do something about it until she just breaks down and screams, you're all going to fucking die <laughs> on, on live TV, which I loved. Of which it. becomes a meme. That, yeah. You know it'll be memed. And viral <laughs> within minutes. <laughs> you know, like, the viral memes that we've got, the, you know, the, the, the guy and his missus and the guy looking backwards at the other girl. Mm. Yeah, the, yeah. the girl with the crazy eyes who's in, like... They've become memes, haven't they? They're that baby doing that with his fist clenched. He's grown up now. That's meme still floating around. Mm. Yeah. You know, so she's going to be a meme for six months and 14 days. Yep. It's interesting, she uses a dieting app to track it, which is another sort of thing with smartphones, is how reliant we are on yeah. our smartphones. Mm. If you can't count the days until this fucking thing's going, no, I'm going to use a dieting app just to, yeah. just to keep track of it. And she's a fucking scientist, so what's that say? Mm. Their media appearance was a complete failure. It certainly was. From the analytics of social media, that's how they go on now, isn't it? Of course it how is. How many clicks it's got. They got clicks below the local traffic reports. <laughs> They're trying to tell people we're all gonna die. Yeah. It just ain't breaking through, is it? Uh, yeah. And when they tell when when they tell the scientists that, and she's just like, so that's it. We're not getting. Yeah. No one's gonna take us seriously because no. we haven't got enough fucking clicks. No. <laughs> yeah. Professor Mindy's got favourables. He's an oh, yeah. AILF now. Yes, an astronomer. I'd like to fuck. Apparently. He's like, what's that gonna do with anything? Yeah. But I like his corruption in this movie because yeah. he gets corrupted by it all. Mm. For a brief time. Yeah. Yes, he has his redemption arc, admittedly, but he gets mm. corrupted by the glitz, yeah. the glamour, the, the, the appearance. He's on Sesame Street, for God's sake. Yeah. Even the head of NASA's come out now and said it's it's more near Miss Hysteria. Although she's a former anaesthesiologist and the president, Orlean's super donor. Yeah, so the more money... And he's you... like, it's all corrupt, isn't it? That's what... Professor Mindy's like, it's all corrupt. The more money you give to the president, the better the job she puts you in. Yeah. And if you're a number one donor, you she'll literally got... change policy for you. Yeah. And if you're her son, you'll be the uh, chief of staff. Yeah. And the Jennifer Lawrence character, her boyfriend sells his story to the paper. That's right. I slept with the I, I, we're all going to fucking die chick. Yeah. He was a bit of a slimy fucker, yeah. though, wasn't he? Yeah. Or wasn't it why I regret... Ah, that's it. Something why I regret sleeping with... The old, we're all going like to die that, chick. Wasn't it? Yeah. And that, was, that was how he broke up with her, essentially. He was. she saw that on the news and was like, what? My career! <laughs> and then they're both seized by the FBI for disclosure <laughs> of government secrets. That's true, but DiCaprio comes through it all. He's the sexy scientist. He's telling you all about how we're going to die, but you're not listening to him, you're looking at those eyes. And he starts knocking off the anchor for the... the presenter. Yeah, I would have to. For the new show, did he? Yeah, I would have to, to be fair. She reminded me a little bit of the blonde in BFG. Battle BFG? Star Battlestar oh. Galactica. BSG. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So you said S then a B the B F G. Don't recall her don't recall hot blondes being in that. There's a little ginger. Those fracking giant machines. <laughs> Number six, wasn't she? So Leonardo DiCaprio's character, Professor Mindy, he gets a nationwide fan base, he's in magazines, he's on TV, he becomes the president's science advisor, but he makes moral compromise after moral compromise, moderating his criticisms and declining to stick up for Lawrence and even creating propaganda for the administration. Now, what I love was the big announcement of this mm-hmm. on the battleship. I'm yeah. assuming that's an Iowa class. That was so bloody 
Trump-esque, wasn't it? Mm. Very Trump-esque. Interesting that America kept all its major battleships and Britain only kept... didn't keep any. Mm. So they're going to blast the Comet off course in nukes, aren't they? And they Commander are. Drask is going to lead the mission. I love Commander Drask. <laughs> Ron- ably played by Ron Perlman, who I loved yeah. in this film. Shows you like, oh yeah, it? wasn't he the guy who got to launch the presidential kids get fit campaign? He's just like, move it, you little shit. Yeah. Fucking jump, you fat shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, some may call this a suicide mission, but, well, just remember me. <laughs> Has a great end too in this movie. Yeah. Now, the film takes an unexpected turn, or at least unexpected to me. I thought DiCaprio and Lawrence had to spend longer trying to convince the president to take the problem seriously. In fact, when the politics of the situation change, the president embraces the mission of destroying the comet and putting together a national strategy approved by top scientists to secure the funding. Yeah, it's only because she's been involved in that sex scandal. That's the Selling sex scandal. Sending the photo of a snatch. I'd look at a photo of a snatch. Mouth yeah. Street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would. She looked good. It's good for her age. I don't know how old she is. The launch goes well. There's eighty-one percent chance of success. <laughs> Can't knock eighty-one percent, can you? Yeah. yeah. They're gonna send up a few rockets, aren't they? Yeah. Is it eighteen altogether? I think it was. So they've yeah. old space shuttles and satellites that have been slaved to one command shuttle, which has got Commander Drask in it. Mm-hmm. So these are yeah. just fire them all into the into the asteroid. And there's a new sort of fad going around with people firing rockets into their face. Did you see that bit? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the rocket challenge. Yeah. The way yeah. Like, you know, it, loads of social media, isn't it? So yeah. Loads of issues of how it can spread really fast and it's really dumb. It, yeah, like a yeah. Tide Pods thing. And yeah, yeah. Ice bucket. Stupidity of Most it. of the people who did that didn't even know what the fuck they were doing it for. <laughs> That was a satanic ritual, wasn't it? Not the ice bucket challenge. Apparently, yeah. Interesting. I didn't do it. I do that kind of thing in private. <laughs> so the problem is that Peter, Peter, the, uh, Peter Isherwell. What's the name of the company? Bash. Bash. Je- the biggest global telecommunications company. Isn't he the richest person that's ever lived? Yeah, he's like uh, Elon Musk type character, isn't he? Yes. He is. Uber strange. Yeah. Indeed. Very boxic. Well, I think. Yeah, as the launch is going off, he asks the president to come out, and she's got to leave because he's the mega donor. He's, he's the, he's one, the that's really one that's really in charge. Yeah. Nobody can look him in the eyes while speaking mm. to him. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> yeah. You'll scare him off, basically. He's like a yeah. weird little whimpering, little freaky thing. Yeah. Well, he's majorly autistic, he's so, clearly. He's, but yeah, he, he's so clever in whatever it is yeah. he does. Like the technology of, like you say, like Elon Musk kind yeah. of character. But, but do we want these problem. people having ultimate say over no. mankind? Well, the point is, it's the it's fact not that a democracy, he's, is it? No. he's the ultimate rich guy. He's the fourth richest person in the world. Yeah. And it's showing what power yeah. these super rich people Yeah. Because all of a sudden have. the rockets just start turning around. all of a sudden yeah. he decides that yeah. he wants this for something else. Yeah, he doesn't want to destroy this like this. He literally wants to break it into manual pieces that could impact the Earth semi-non-catastrophically. And the president just goes with it. And then be put to industrial use. And I yeah. think of the jobs the asteroid will create. There's 32 to 140 trillion dollars of rare Earth materials. Metals, they reckon. It would be, yeah, it would be the metals that we're running out of. That I mean, your, your smartphone has some very rare metals in it and they are running out. But... I mean, you're dicing with death. Yeah. Yeah, you are. I'm not a spiritual person. I'm not a religious person. The only thing I believe in is aliens and the survival of the human race, because I'm one of it. Yeah. Especially if it's gonna, if we've got an extinction level catastrophe in my lifetime, I want us to survive. I want to survive because why the fuck not? I, I mean, I'm all about the species. That's my philosophy. We should survive. We should go out there and colonise space and spread ourselves about. Ooh. Just not under this kind of stuff. I don't think we're ready for that. Well, not yeah, yet, but in the future, well, in the not-too-distant future. I oh, know, yeah. It's just a disaster, isn't it? Maybe it's best that we we do fucking... No! End up killing we us can all. be great. Some of our moments are fantastic. We just need some kind of event that gets everyone on, on the same team. We just need to get these psychopaths out of power, don't we? We need an alien invasion. We need people who don't go to parties in the middle of lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> They want to just risk the health of the earth just to get more money. We just need to get rid of corrupt governments. Yeah. 
So that's and pretty much every government in the world, from what I gather. Yeah. And um, replace it with me. No, it's got to, power's got to go back to the people. I don't we all crave a dictatorship, really. We seem to evolve power. Like I believe we, we seem to yearn for it. I believe you need leaders. There's no wrong in that, but it's the leaders that we have are wrong. Yes, yep. and that is worldwide. Yep. You only have to just. Well, I don't want to get into it because it's just so. Just it's too political for this lighter program. No, so. no, we go into, we go into everything. <laughs> well, you, go just, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just I, I can't even. I'm too tired to yeah. want to go into all of that kind uh, of well, deep. Uh, but you know what I mean? We all know the amount of corruption out there. The whole system's there, corrupt, isn't and it? And this film is really good at highlighting it. Yeah. Yep. And it's showing you fucking truths that so many people are completely blind to see. Yeah, yeah like major donors deciding policy. Yeah. And this is, this is the point that a lot of people, the conspiracy theorists, would say countries aren't run by the prime ministers, the presidents, no. etc. They're run by these like kind of five superpowers of the world. And in the US, Childs, your, your big pharmaceuticals, things yeah. like that. In the US, they proved it. They did yeah. a study, and they said that unless the top twenty percent want that policy, it's never going to happen. Mm. And it doesn't. It doesn't get to. Was it twenty or lower than that? I think it was a top twenty. So unless the top 20% want that to happen, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. So if you want to tax the top 10%, the top 20%, it ain't going to happen. They're not going to allow it. They basically own the government. Mm. They make the policies. Yeah. The people don't have a say. It's all a show. It's all charade. Yeah. And that's in America. Now, I would argue that Britain is not far behind. No. Every politician has to wear a NASCAR outfit with the names of their sponsors on it. And look what happened to one person that tried to change it, Jeremy Corbyn. They destroyed him in the media. Well, he was a vicarious anti-Semite, Mike, that's why. Was but was he? No, he wasn't. No, I'm just saying that. Like, yeah, this is it, though, isn't it? It pretty obviously wasn't. It was a fucking coup, and it was just... Media-controlled yep. fucking... It's like stoning somebody almost, but not. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, like a verbal stoning yeah. almost, isn't they it? it? They did it to Bernie Sanders. They tried to call him an anti-Semite. He's fucking Jewish. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Honestly. They did it to Gary Glitter. Oh, no, that was... <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> so anyway, this Peter guy, he's decided that there's a new mission now. They're going to send drones to attach the comet, scan via nanotechnology, and deploy micro-targeted quantum fission explosives to break the comet into 30 pieces and are collected in the Pacific Ocean. He says it could end poverty, world hunger, social injustice, loss of biodiversity. It could do. Yeah, great. But at the same time... Best case scenario. Yeah. It's the best case. I, I might see a little of that pie. I'm not going to see as much as he does or his top mates, am yeah. I? I don't think they're just going to neatly land in the Atlantic. Or no, it's going to be semi-what was it? Semi potentially dangerous. Yeah, that's what. Like that. So it could still it. create a tsunami. And none of this science is peer-reviewed. That is vitally important in science. Of course, someone yeah. discovers something, you've got to be able to repeat that, make sure it works. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, it's not a theory; it's just a hypothesis. Yeah. yeah. And you look at it, literally Leonardo DiCaprio, Doctor Mindy says to to Peter, Peter, can we call him something else? Because I don't, I don't like him. <laughs> Honestly, people are going to start thinking the name Peter is evil. It's More not, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not this guy in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Doctor Minnie says, "Look, you know, you're kicking off top scientists who are colleagues of mine because they're not agreeing with what you're saying. This is going to do, and you're discrediting them. You're only employing people who agree with your science." And you're saying it's going to work when not everyone else on the other side is saying, no, it's not. And again, there's messages in that. Well, look at the, the vaccine. You can put that straight to the vaccine, can't you? Yeah. In modern times, the COVID vaccine. Do we need it? Do we need as many? Do we have, we have a boost every six months? Well, that's just making Pfizer and, and the other one, what's his name, AstraZeneca, fucking millions. More. And they're the ones saying this, but people who worked on the AstraZeneca have come out and said, no, you don't need to have a booster. Because eventually you're going to get it, and that's more effective than any booster anyway. As doctors have like, it if you want it, but believe me, it doesn't stop you getting it. It doesn't stop you spreading it. It just stops you being less ill. Something I read earlier on that was in one of the news sites 
that basically because of the doctors and nurses within the NHS that haven't been vaccinated, come April, there's going to be a mass exodus from you the NHS. You could be looking at 100,000, I read somewhere. I, I didn't see numbers. All I saw was the fact that they were saying, look, it's going to be a mass exodus because... And that tells you, clearly, there's a lot of hospital staff aren't having it. Why not? It's because they're seeing the people coming in that are being affected by it. Yeah. And they're going, fucking not for me, thanks. Yeah. And, and that's something that I strongly believe, because I've seen lots of people personally, one person personally, and other people through research and that. There's this poor guy in Canada that his name's Kevin, and he shakes. He's got the constant shakes, and he, I mean, I mean, bloody Elvis Presley, like, hip shakes, kind of. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he used to... I shouldn't laugh, actually. But it fucked him. And it's happened within days of him having his jab. And it's it's a neurological thing. Mm. So it's affected his movement. And But the poor bugger. And that's not the only thing. It's just No, and there are going to be some with severe reactions, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, that, that's a severe reaction that he's, he's stuck with. It's like, but, but it's like one in 10,000, do you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's more than that. It's, it, there is more than that. That's the problem. Wow. This, is, this is what's so know. covered up. We're not. Let's move. But no, we're not talking about that. Yeah. But we're talking no. about the fact that they do like it's to anti. You, you discredit people who are going to agree with your official this scientist lines. Yeah. If you don't agree with us, you're obviously wrong about everything. So we're going to drag your name to the mud as well. This is the problem, isn't it? And that is, and it does happen. So I like the way they highlight that. Yeah. So they go to a pub after you know they've they discovered that they've changed their plans and everything. Yep. And some people are asking, oh, what are you talking about? What's going on with the comic? You've got a White House badge on you? Yeah. And they don't want to say anything, but then Jennifer Lawrence's character stands up and says, they're going to let the comet hit to make a load of rich people more disgustingly rich. And then there's just a riot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> smashing the place. Yeah, it's quite funny, it? actually, that bit. Yeah, yeah and then, she's, then she, you see her in the car with another... She's got the hood over her head again. Yeah. <laughs> Taken away by the FBI. Yeah. <laughs> And Professor Mind is used as propaganda to sell the comet's new advantages. Yeah, because they're jobs and stuff. Phone call, phone lines, how can the comet benefit you? Should you be scared? And here's all our questions. Answer the questions. He said it's free to call, but only from selected networks. This is his full on sellout moment, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And then he, he's with that woman from the presenter from the Daily Rip. He walks into his apartment, his wife's there. Yeah. 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 That was in the act. She just humiliates him, basically, doesn't yeah. she? Yeah. Like, yeah, because he's a nervous, timid kind of guy, or he was. He was on all these antidepressants and restless leg syndrome pills, everything, anything, anxiety, all of that depression. He bought into that lifestyle so much, I don't think he really needed the pills at that point, because he was this confident, sexy scientist that he always wanted to be. Bought him out he's of his shell, didn't it? He's banging a fucking hot journalist. He's the government's science advisor. Mm-hmm. It's what you would dream of, isn't it, when you get into that field? Shame about the circumstance, but hey Shame about the circumstance. <laughs> yeah, but he finds out, he realises later that he's made a mistake, didn't he? Yeah. 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 But at this point, he chooses the mistress and she goes home. Yeah. And then the mistress dumps him anyway. And there's a bit on the news, on the TV, and they're talking about the comet. They said that 37% don't want the comet to hit. <laughs> yeah, only 37%. 23% don't even believe the comet is real and it's rising. Well, that's why the, it was the don't look up, isn't yeah. it? That, that's, that was the hashtag, That's basically it? QAnon, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. This film's version yeah. of QAnon. You know, the don't look... It's not until you can see it in the sky that people start to think, oh, fuck. But then you still always get your hardcore believers, now nah, it's a fake. It's a projection. Mm. It's Project Bluebeam. It's just getting a bit bigger every day. <laughs> and then Professor Bindi meets with Peter again, looking at the new drones that have been built. And uh, he's saying, you know, none of this has been peer reviewed still, and some of my colleagues have been basically trashed for, for coming out and saying this. He turns to him and says, We've got 40 million data points on you. I know when you have colon polyps. Months before your doctor does. Uh, <laughs> he says, you've got a few now, but nothing to worry about. <laughs> you see yourself as someone guided by high ethical beliefs. 
But really, you're just a field mouse. You run from pain toward pleasure. Which he did. Yeah, and he says, we know 96.5% accuracy how you're going to die. He says, it's so boring, I can't remember, but you're going to die alone. <laughs> <laughs> Guy's a psychopath. Mm -hmm. Clearly. But they can predict our behaviour yeah. with that, can't they? They can. It's yeah. a scary thing. That's how advertising works nowadays. You only have to mention something when you're on Facebook or something, and the next time you get an advert, it'll be for that. Yeah. You're it's, like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. I've not searched for that in Google or anything like that. I've just kind of mentioned it, and then all of a sudden, that's the advert I see. Like, I mentioned Lederhosen once on this podcast. I had an advert for Lederhosen on Amazon a few days later. <laughs> Strange that, innit? Well, yeah. fuck, why would you get an ad for Lederhosen? How about the one where we mentioned The Simpsons and then the, the episode come up on your uh, YouTube Yes, it did, yeah. The one we were talking mm. about. That's pinpoint, isn't it, really? Yeah. yeah. Just watch The Social Dilemma. Yeah. We said that, Pete. Haven't known. Need to watch it, mate. Yeah. Okay. It's frightening. Is it on that kind of theme? Yes. Yeah. Is yeah. It okay. Yeah, we discussed it, didn't we? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did an episode yeah. on it. Yeah. Have a listen to that, listener. I'll, I'll will as well. I'll yeah. find that and I'll watch the movie definitely. So Peter says you'll die alone. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> this psycho dude. Yeah. <laughs> we call him Peter. Him <laughs> Peter. Yeah. <laughs> President Orlean says, you're lucky Peter, like, like Peter. she. <laughs> you're with the grown-ups now. And she lights a cigarette and behind her it says flammable on the side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. You're with the grown-ups. They've got a movie coming out about the comet or anything. That's, that's it, yeah, there's a movie. I can't remember what it's called. There was a, on the on the fucking movie poster, I remember that, is is a, bit, a picture of the Earth just having a yeah. hole punched through it by a <laughs> comet. It's called Total Devastation. That's it, Total it Devastation. It costs $300 million. Oh. It's slated to be released the day the comet hits. <laughs> How fucking stupid can you get? <laughs> With the publicity alone, will be probably make the money back. Yeah. And Peter's back on the Daily Rip. They're not Peter, Professor Mindy. And he tries to raise concerns again about the lack of peer review on the project. And he has a meltdown, doesn't he? He does. Yes. He says, if we can't all agree that a comet the size of Mount Everest hurtling toward Earth is not a good fucking thing, then what the hell has happened to us? I think this administration has completely lost its mind and we're going to fucking die. <laughs> he basically goes batshit crazy, yeah. just like Kate yeah. did in the first yeah. interview. Yeah, yeah. And then he ends up with a hood on his head. <laughs> <laughs> but now he's driving his car and he looks up and he sees a comet, doesn't he? That's yeah. it. Yeah. They can see it actually in the sky now. Like you could a bit like with Haley's comet. Yeah. If anyone's old enough to remember when Haley's comet was sat in. I don't think the I. Late eighties, early nineties. No, I don't think I saw it. I don't know. Trying to think early 90s, no. Must have been I'm late not sure 80s. If, I'm not sure if I fall into the category that was too young to remember it and won't see it again. 92, 93 maybe? I don't know, but... It had Halle Bop in the early 90s and the... Uh, trying to think about the Solar Warden. What are they called, Mike? We're called Solar Warden. Yeah, the band Solar Warden. Band, yeah. Yeah. Now, we're talking about 94, 95. Heaven's Gate. That had Halle Bop in 94, didn't they? Yeah. It was Haley's comic, wasn't it? No, you're thinking of Halle Bop, 94. Because there's the Heaven's Gate cult that killed themselves. We did an episode on that too. That's an early one. Yep. Go on so then, Professor Mendy goes on like a Sesame Street show, doesn't he? He does, I love that. He goes, <laughs> literally goes on Sesame Street. Was it Sesame Street, was it? I think it was. Well, well pretty, not like I proper like Sesame Street. Yeah. yeah, it's a rip off, but it's the same kind of puppets. There's an Elmo type figure. Yeah. <laughs> and he shouts, kids, tell your parents, President and Peter are. Sociopaths and fascists. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids like, this isn't what we rehearsed. <laughs> and then of course you got the whole hashtag don't look up versus hashtag just look up. Yeah. Yeah. They have the the, the concert, don't they? The just look up That's concert. It, yeah. Riley Beaner yeah. performs a song. Yeah. Ariana Grande. She was good in it. Character. Yeah. She's very good in it. In fact, I I like quite liked her character. For me, the concert was quite cringy. Oh, it was very cringy. It, I think it was completely meant to be, wasn't it? Yeah. That was the point of it. Super cheesy. Her and her fella that she got back with 
live on telly after he'd been cheating on her and she'd been cheating on him yeah and they did a song together yeah. very sweet kind of thing but super cringy <laughs> it's like a bit of a love song but it's also like about the comet as about well. the comet and about humanity you know we knew no bounds felt this be the same running against all odds but soon against ourselves you haunted every memory with no goodbyes all bad for me your pride put out the fire it's, it's, it's a love song yeah to a comet Look up what he's really trying to say. He's getting your head out your ass. Listen to the goddamn qualified scientists. We really fucked it up, fucked it up this time. That's right. It's so close, I can feel the heat big time. You can act like everything is all right. But this is probably happening in real time. Celebrate or cry or pray, whatever it takes to get you through the mess. Because tomorrow may never come. The mess we made. The mess we made. And it's true, basically. It's like, we've fucked it up now. We could have fucking deflected this thing. We had an 81% chance. Yeah. And as it gets closer, we could just nuke the damn thing if, if it was a last resort, couldn't we? Yeah. But we thought that now we've got like, it's all about greed now. It's like, no, no, we've, we've got to make more money out of this. Got these metals, I need to make, keep making smartphones and laptops and tablets. I, I need, how much money do I pay you? Change your policy. Literally divert the mission that has got an 81% chance of succeeding. Yep. Just divert it, turn it around. Don't even do anything. Just, just trust this guy because he's rich. And he pays know. you a lot of money. But there is one more hope, isn't there? Russia, Indian and Chinese have got a joint mission. They have. And but then it blows up with a launch pad. Yeah. And that's, it's gone. That's Wasn't it. there a, I always thought like he sabotaged them. Oh, uh, uh, did that, he? that's kind of, that was the sense I got. Ah, definitely. right, okay. I didn't and I'm not sure it was just an explosion on the yeah. launch pad. Mm. I'm not sure if there was some kind of, just before you saw the explosion on the launch pad, there was a shot of a missile coming down. Ah, right, might have been, I didn't notice. I didn't notice that either, but I just remember like... Because I remember looking, what's that missile doing? And then the second on the screen, what's, you know, just comes up and then you see the explosion on the launch yeah. pad. So that's it now, Bash is the only hope. Isn't it? So the president and Peter and her son, the chief of staff. Very well played by Jonah Hill in this movie. Yeah, he was good. He was terrible. Made me hate him. Yeah, yeah. Made me hate him. Terrible human being. Yeah, Yeah. he was a terrible person. Oh, God, yeah. Brilliant actor. He he pulled it off brilliantly. Everyone hates him. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's done his job. Just before they're about to launch, the president asks Peter how she'll die. He says, you're going to be eaten by a Brontorock. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what that is. That's what he says, yeah, I don't know what that is, but yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that later. No, he says, you don't know what that is. <laughs> That's what he says to Does him. He? he says, you don't know what that is. I think he says, uh, we. No, he says, we. Oh, is it we? Yeah, because he, yeah. he doesn't know what it is. <laughs> but yeah, it was funny, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You like, it's a pop at the end, isn't it? Professor Mindy and the Jennifer Lawrence character, they go to the, his wife's house. Reconciliation, Redemption yeah. Arc. Yeah. She gets, a boyfriend, she gets a little boyfriend on the way for like the last week or two of the life or whatever. No, she you? says in college I fucked somebody. When we yeah, when we, when no, we, no, yeah. Um, Kate. Oh, yeah, oh, she yeah. gets somebody, that yeah. little boyfriend, doesn't she? He does that nice little prayer at the end. Yeah. 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 She picked him up along the way, didn't Basically, she? Basically, yeah. They were just hanging out, smashing light bulbs against a wall, and then all of a sudden she's like, fuck it, let's have sex right yeah, here. The world's right ending like yeah. bollocks to it. There's, there's like, what? I think the last shot we saw of her timer was like 25 days. Yeah. But that was prior to her meeting him. But I think that was maybe around that same kind of time or maybe mm. there was a week or two left. Mm. It was a bit difficult to decipher, really. It no, kinda... it was a couple of days because they were, as Michael get to, they're in the car on the way. They've picked them both up. He's taken them to his wife's house. Yeah, but they're going to go grocery met. shopping, so it might be the day before. Yeah. And he asked her to marry him, didn't he? He? he meets he me- way, yeah. he, at least a couple of days before they hit, yeah. and then on the, on the final day they're going to. But either way, she thought, yeah. "Fuck it, the world's ending." Yeah. He wants it, Fuck and it, they decide to spend <laughs> the last day together, eating a meal and just chatting and being with your family and people so, you love. Guess what happened? He didn't die alone. He didn't. Yeah, that's true. He did not die alone. That's a good point. He, perhaps because he changed his changed course. his ways. Yeah. Yeah. But even oh Peter, he didn't. Uh... No, but of course. Thanks for that. <laughs> the mission fires and they have a few failures to begin with. Yeah, Two yeah. Two go down on the launch pad. They crash into each other. Yeah. And then they're like, "Can we do it with that many?" Yeah, yeah. We factored in redundancies. Yeah, that's well, fine. What, what, we can do it with what that. What they were trying to do was 
launch all these like small nukes up onto yeah, it, but yeah. they were really tactical nukes, weren't they? Well, they That's weren't right. nukes, but they were like a fusion. They were nuclear fission. Yeah. Nuclear fission. There was something slightly different about them. Anyway, there was new yeah. technology, yeah. and they would all like little nano bugs and things, and they would go on and in they weren't nano bugs. They were like just big drones. Weren't there was they? something like nano about it. I remember them men- mentioning. Oh, there might be something nano about it. But they, were, they, were, they, were, they were quite big, weren't they? Because they oh, could, they were massive. Yeah. Mm. Like, but they can't latch on. The comet's yeah. going too fast. The yeah, t- you know, they, 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 one bumps into the other. Oh, we've lost another now. Oh, yeah. I don't know. There's gone. Oh, we're six down. Is that enough? And he's like, and he just starts. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. I'm just gonna go to the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. He leaves, and then the president's like, oh, I'm gonna go as well. <laughs> she leaves. Obviously, they've realised. Leaves the son there. Leaves the son there, and she's. Yeah. But then he's like, "Shit, they're coming back." Yeah. That could, she's coming back. Then you see Drask, and he's firing his rifle at the car. Oh, I love it. He's firing. You'll never take me alive. I'm sure he's firing. <laughs> I can't remember. It was an M60 or some Russian-made machine gun. I think it looked more like an M60 to be yeah. honest. And he was just like, "Ah, you'll never take me alive." Like, he's like pissed. Swinging from a whiskey bottle, firing a machine gun, one armed. It's like yes. And the comet hits. People panic. And then there's a great shot of a native Indian. He's banging his drum as a meteor just strike around him. That was a, that was a striking image. Yeah. It's a very striking image, but also not going to achieve anything. No. <laughs> but then again, if you want to, you know, as he's watching me, these things strike the earth, he wants to bang a little drum and dance around. Why the fuck not? Yeah. I'm going to be naked with a bottle of whiskey in my hand, screaming at the sky. And then just as I'm about to go, Professor Mindy says, we really did have everything, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. We had the Garden of Eden and we fucked it. But we also have got things now, haven't we? we? We've got a very easy life compared to our great grandparents. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, we've all got a roof over our head, we've got central heat, an indoor toilet. We're not allowed to got the bog today outside. In oh. lots of ways. In lots of ways, we're very lucky to live in the time we live in. Exactly. We've yeah, never, we've, technically, we've never had it better. No, we have. We're going downhill. We're never no, going to get it like, as good as our parents did. Our parents had the best. Yeah, but we've got 60s, Wi-Fi. 60s, 70s. Yeah, we've got the technology, but <laughs> as in poverty and, and things like that. It's yeah, but still, I mean... We can afford to keep the eating on. Not everybody can, Ben. I'm glad you can. Not everybody can. There's a lot of people, people have to can. choose. A lot of people have to choose between heating or food. The majority of people can. Yeah. Yeah. There's more right. food banks than McDonald's. Well, that's, 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 that's McDonald's fault. They should drop their prices. Believe me, things <laughs> are not the best they ever were. They're going yeah. downhill. You've fast. never had a more comfortable life. You're sat here in a heated flat. You've got a roof not over your head, a nice is. comfy I'm chair. Lucky. I'm lucky. Not everybody else is. You know. Man, not everyone else is, but from your point of view... I'm not about my point of view, I'm about the people, general, the whole general generally. public. Yeah, well, in still, the past two years, our life expectancy has gone down. Yeah, but your healthcare is still free, isn't it? For us it is, but not Americans. Well, that's it, well, I'm not about us, I'm about this country. Well, I'm not about the whole working class as people together. Just because you're all right and you think you've got the best you've ever had, that's good No, I don't you. think it's the best I've ever had it, but... But other people haven't. But I'm just saying, I'm, I consider myself very lucky to be able to yeah. go home and put the eating on... Have some food, sit exactly. down and watch Netflix. Got a full belly every night. So that's Half great. the world's population don't. They, they're on the breadline, they're starving. And I'm just saying, for most people in the Western civilised world, we're doing all right, aren't we? I don't know about most. I'd say most overall. Yes, there's always going to be a, a smaller minority. But yeah, a lot Not of people. Small minority. Like, yeah, people are struggling, but they can still put the eating on. They can still put up elaborate Christmas decorations every fucking year. It must cost a fucking fortune to light up. So yeah, people can't be that wet off, can they? We still have, we still got it worse than our parents. I'm, just, I'm trying to say. Yeah. Oh yes, that's because they, they had it the best. That's because that's because they voted to take all that off us, the twats. Yeah. I had that disagreement with my dad. The one said you had everything. I said you could buy an house for five grand. Yep. You, yeah. could, you had free dental. You had a fully funded NHS from cradle to grave. I said and you voted to take that away from me over the course of so many years. So yeah. My dad's always very conservative. Mm. I said, over the course of years, you voted to take that away from me. Until, like, now, if you die, I've got to fucking sell part of the house to pay for your... So well, you don't have to go in a home. You might have to sell, the, you might have to sell part of the house to cover your end-of-life care. So there's that justice. Yeah. Mm. But you voted for people that want to put that in. Because they don't want to fund you from cradle to grave anymore. No. It's the privatisation, isn't it? Yeah. So as the planet's destroyed... The rescue ship carrying 2,000... Oh, that's... A, yeah, cause usually, I've got a ship. Yeah. It's cryogenic. We'll, we'll travel until we find the nearest Earth-like planet. It will all be in cryosleep. It'll be fucking yeah. awesome. This is Peter. Peter. 
carrying on the um, yeah. human race. 22,740 years later. And then you see the cryotubes, though? Yeah. What, did you see any of Aliens, didn't they? No, yeah. the cryotubes, they had their job. Yeah, they did, yeah. yeah. It's like uh, hedge fund manager, banker. banker oil tycoon, a lobbyist. Mm. Yeah. So they step out onto the planet. Peter's like, oh, there's 9% higher oxygen. And 58% of the life support worked. Higher than we expected. 58% and that's a success? I don't want, you know, 99%? Oh, no. So that takes them down from 2,000 to, what, 1,100? Yeah. Just under. Mm. And they're all naked, aren't they? And the president goes over this bird-like animal and tries to pet it. Yeah. And it eats her. She was checking uh, out its feathers for yeah. a, a, a dress, I think. <laughs> and Peter's like, oh, that's a Bronto rock. <laughs> 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 and then they start surrounding the landy bar, didn't they? All these b- bird-like creatures. Yeah. And he's like, don't pet them. <laughs> <laughs> Did no one bring any guns? <laughs> Obviously not. Because that's the one thing I would want yeah. on an interplanetary yeah, mission, yeah. Is, is some means to defend myself. 100%. And then you think the film's ended, but then if you go to the end credits, there's a little bit, and the president's son emerges from the rubble. Oh, I didn't see that. Bit. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And he records himself on his phone. He's like, "Hey, I'm the last man alive. Shit's all fucked up. Don't forget to like and subscribe." <laughs> <laughs> the last man alive. I'm the last man alive. Don't you? Oh, well, it just sums it up. Yeah. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was great. I thought it had some really telling themes to it, and that stuff that genuinely worries me about society. Yeah. You know, like the anti size yeah, don't look up. You can see the damn thing in the sky and you're keeping your head down. You should be shitting yourself over this. You should be screaming, why aren't you doing anything? You need. You can't risk this. Well, people have been told not to trust the science. That's it, which is what they do now. Yeah. Don't trust the science. And at one point, they're like, at that don't look up rally, and then they look up and they see the comet mass in the sky. And some guy's like, they fucking lied to us. Oh, yeah, they throw yeah. the bottle at you yeah. the hill. Because yeah. they basically, it is a Trump rally, isn't it? Yeah. The, 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 yeah. It's very Trump. He's meant to be Don Jr., isn't he? Yeah. He's yeah, always absolutely. sniffing and things, you know. It's, he's always like... Yeah, he's off like his tits. Yeah. At one point he says, I've just taken some molly. He said he's just kicking in. He's kicking in at the right time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> isn't he when they're sat in the fucking... Yeah. It's the first mission yeah. that's going well. And he's like, well, I just took some molly like three hours ago. It's just kicking in right now. The right time because it's all going well, isn't it? Yeah. So he's fucking busting his tits off. <laughs> I loved it. Those important things, stuff that more people are more you know, the people who are giving us our news are more concerned about ratings and clicks than they are actually about telling us things. Mm. There's another one. Yeah, this, oh. the, the media. Yeah, the media. Wow. That's ninety percent of media corporations. Sorry, six media corporations control ninety percent of the media in America. Yep, it's not good. It's not good at all. In 1985, it was 50 companies that owned 90%. Now it's just six companies. And these six companies are GE, General Electric. They own Comcast, NBC, Universal Pictures and Focus Features, News Corp, Fox, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Post, The Sun in the UK, Sky. Yeah. So your Sky TV is News Corp. Disney. Oh, that fucking mouse. Fuck that mouse. Notable properties, ABC, ESPN, Pixar, Miramax, and Marvel Studios. Viacom, they own MTV, Nickelodeon Jr. Weirdly not Nick- Nickelodeon. Viacom? <laughs> Wasn't that on Lost in Powers? Probably. <laughs> BET, CMT, and Paramount Pictures. The massive fucking film company. Time Warner, notable properties are CNN, HBO, Time and Warner Brothers. Obviously, they do films and, of course, HBO, Game of yeah. Thrones, biggest show in the world at one point. It was, yeah. Probably was right until the end. Everyone went, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and CBS, notable properties, Showtime, Smithsonian Channel, NFL.com, Jeopardy, and 60 Minutes. Yep, so they Six. control all 90% of all the yeah. media in America. So they shape your thoughts and opinions, don't they? Well, you watch what agrees with you, yeah. don't you? And their aims and their what they want is completely in opposite to the normal person, yeah. normal American. Where's social media in that? Facebook, is that the other 10%? Facebook's probably Must more, be, yeah. yeah. Facebook's probably in that list right there. Yeah. And this is the mainstream media, specifically. Right, OK. They still get, the, yeah, they get their likes and shares through Facebook, which, yes, uh, yeah. Because they're not actually a media company, are they? They're just a platform. Platform, right. Okay. They don't actually produce any content, do they? No. 
No. No, but they ban people often enough. But then, of course, is this film all about what's really happening in the world? That's climate change. He, he has said that, yeah, it's a, it's a metaphor for climate change. And there's five scenarios that show us what future of the planet could look like. So humans have already warmed the planet by at least one degree Celsius by burning fossil fuels that spew heat, trapping gases into the sky. The oceans are rising and deadly disasters like wildfires, heat waves and flooding are becoming more destructive and almost every part of the world is experiencing the effects of climate change. But nobody seems to be doing anything about it. Greta's having a go. Yeah. I mean, the people in charge. Oh, yeah. no, they're not, because they're all taking money off Saudi Arabia and Qatar, mm. all the oil-producing nations, mm. aren't they? It's FIFA at a governmental level. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Look, they said in Britain, now, 2030, you won't be able to buy a petrol car anymore. You have to buy electric if you buy a new car to 2020. What's so, 2030. What does it matter if we're still burning... That's the point, isn't it? Coal and... Yeah, you've still got to put your... All right, we're not selling as much petrol. All right, you don't need that, but you still got that petrol is probably just going to go fuel a fire, a power station. I mean, it's good though. That it's good because you aren't getting the emissions, which still kills forty thousand people a year in the UK. Mm. Bad air. It's incredible, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it does. It's that's a. But then we had that scandal, didn't we? With who was it? Was it Audi? VW. 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 Sorry. Yeah. I bet they're all at it. V- Cooking the. Derby. They yeah. got caught out, didn't they? They're the yeah. only ones that got caught out selling the dodgy catalytic converters. They did nothing, they just faked the test results. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But how many car companies do they own? VW, mm. my God. All of them, isn't it? They own loads of, loads of good. That's Skoda, for a start. Porsche, Bugatti. Mm. Aren't you have Lamborghinis? VW nowadays. Audi as well. Audi, yeah. All the big boys. Mm. So the five stories about the future of our climate explained by scientists. So there's five scenarios, I reckon, with climate change now. One, called SSP1-1.9, not the catchiest title. No. SSP1-1.9. SSP stands for Shared Socioeconomic Pathways. Yeah. And this scenario has been described as taking the green road and is the most ambitious and hardest to achieve storyline. Well, it, it isn't. You've just got to want to put the money into it, isn't it? That's what it is. It's like, hey, let's, you know all that desert that no one really lives in? Struggle with solar panels in that will distribute the energy. Yeah, if you put solar panels in the Sahara Desert, it would power the world. Mm. Well, you know, there's deserts on every part of the globe. Yeah. So the world's constantly getting the energy. No one's living there. Might as well. You need a lot of water, though, and... Lots of rare earth materials. Yeah, that is an issue. And that solar panels like aren't the most environmentally thing when you try and get rid of them. Yeah. But you know, if we plowed all our money into it, or even wave power, yeah, hydroelectric. Exactly. What choice have we got? We can't keep burning fossil fuels. It's killing us, isn't it? Well, we can. We'll just all die. Yeah. But that's you get the feeling that's what the people in charge would like us to do, don't you? How would the solar panels fare in, like, you know, sandstorms and... Yeah, does that, that to be taken into account? Well? It needs cleaning every yeah. day as well. Yeah. You need people to take care of it, yeah. Now, this scenario envisions a gradual but concerted shift towards clean energy with a few political barriers in adapting to and mitigating climate change. This entails a rapid drawdown of fossil fuels, widespread deployment of clean energy, increasing energy efficiency and low and resource demands, and by the middle of the century, humanity will zero out its contributions to climate change. Yay! Yeah. That's good. But it's got to happen. And you've got to have the political will to make it happen, and the political will to make it happen isn't there. So we should, should we go to the worst scenario? Worst scenario... Imagine a world where humanity doesn't just do anything about climate change, but continues to make it worse. This scenario envisions global economic growth across the board, fueled by burning coal, oil and natural gas, with the planet's population levelling off at 7 billion people. While resources are devoted to adapting to climate change, there is little effort to mitigate emissions. The net result will be 4.4 degrees C of warning Celsius centigrade with a range between 3.3 degrees centigrade and 5.7 degrees centigrade, as if large-scale coastal inundation and extremely destructive weather systems weren't enough, parts of the planet will become unlivable during the highest times of the year, 
unless you're living on like you build yourself a little Tatooine igloo mm -hmm. underground with a little dome on top. They had three sons. The, the only future is it will become Morlocks in that future. Yeah, we will, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. This odd combination of assumptions and results make this the most dire, but one of the least plausible scenarios. However, it does help scientists probe the upper limits of their models. So that's it. Um, yeah, SSP 5 to 8.5. Yeah, that's not the good one. That's Mad Max, isn't it? Yeah. That's where we're all roving gangs of road warriors. So I think this is what this film is an allegory of. It is, because we, we don't do anything about it. We're all going to die. That's too late. We didn't do anything about it. Yeah. We're all dead. We're not active fast enough. That's what they're trying to say, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Good film, though. Yeah, I don't think it deserves its low rating. A little preachy at times. What rating was yeah. it given? On IMDb, I think it's actually fairly low. IMD, we were actually a 7.3, it's gone up, it was about a 6.8. Rotten Tomatoes was saying that it is only bomb in some of the years. Obviously, since more people have watched it, I guess. Yeah. People have been talking about it, so I guess they've realised, oh, actually, it's not that bad. 7.3, did you say? Yeah, up to now. That's pretty good. good. I think it's a good IMDb spot on, I'd say, yeah. Yeah, I could, maybe a point lower, but yeah, it's just nitpicky. Maybe a point. I think I'm a bit preachy. I've got a point or two higher. So I, uh, I know you're pointing out a problem, but don't preach at me. Dress it up in entertainment so I can understand it. It was a little bit of that, maybe. I would to watch it again, let's put it that, you know. You wouldn't. No, because it's yeah. a long-ass film. It is a long yeah, film. Yeah. Yeah. Two and a half hours. Yeah, you know, I think it's an important film. In, I mean, in all fairness, I mean, Armageddon might have been two hours forty-five minutes, but it's I'd a still... load of bollocks. That's why Armageddon, mate, is what is a classic. Oh, it's going to be a movie pick one day. I'm going to make you watch it. it. I'm going to make you watch it. I like Armageddon, Pete. Good old fashioned. Right. Ah, I, I like it because it's oh, got um, it, Aerosmith's it. daughter in it. What's the tits? It's got like, annoying Aerosmith song all the way through it as well. <laughs> What's her name? Not all the way through. Liv Tyler. Liv, Liv Tyler. Yeah. Stop playing constantly on a loop all the way through the film. <laughs> it's in my head. <laughs> well, that's your problem, not the films. <laughs> no, you know, I think 7.3 is about right. I'd go with that, yeah. It's, yeah, right. I think it's that's a good film. I think it's important. I think it, like you say, it highlights and, and reflects back to us the society that we're creating, and it's not a pretty one. But I know it, obviously, it's a satire, it takes everything to the extreme. But I don't know, man. I looked at it and thought a lot of it was recognisable, wasn't it? Yeah. The only thing that got me, the only flaw in its logic was like, surely just because America says we're going to launch this bash mission, instead every other country in the world that's got nuclear weapons is going to go, no, nah, you're not. You're not because this is coming closer. I mean, Russia's got the second largest nuclear stash. They would do something, not just one rocket to go up. Yeah. Some of America. India. Yeah, You'd like to think that if it Fuck comes me, to right? it. Just shoot it down my fucking ear then. Sorry. <laughs> Just us would have a. Our little country, we'd have enough firepower to take it down. We're expanding ours by a third. I think we're going up to 300 now. We're about 220. I think we're going up to about 300 ish nuclear warheads. Just that, if you think, one nuclear vessel, 12 potential nukes on that. Yeah. Each one of those nukes has got 12 warheads. That's it, all independently targeted. Each independently targeted. So you think one of those warheads, you're talking 500 times more powerful than Hiroshima. Yep. That's Easy. each warhead. And then, so you times 12 by 12. 144. So one of our subs could stick 144 warheads into it in different locations. Yep. You'd like, and to you'd like to think the that world, we'd be like yeah, on it. You'd like to think the world will come together at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. If we're on the like... shit, don't just leave it to the Americans, mm. and certainly don't leave it to her, because she <laughs> leaves them, she leaves all the world leaders on hold when they're all saying, "Why do you stop the mission? Why do you turn the shows around?" She leaves them on hold. She's like, "Ah, I'll talk to them later." But that also at plays... that point, you've all got to go. Well, oh, fuck that fuck bitch. Yeah, but it plays to the <laughs> arrogance of the Americans. Isn't I know, it? but you still be like the superpower, and they decide everything. There is a power up with Iron Sky in that. Is there? Yeah, because yeah, the ring dance, isn't it? Didn't you? I know you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even a bit of um, Team America. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, it is literally. It's like the world said we don't have one space war vessel, and that's that's us. The US you know, has it. But every other country in the world's built them too, and she's like, "We agreed, damn it, that only we'd have them. You lot can't have them. You've been betraying our deal." 
We've got to be the, the top dogs, isn't it? That that mm. mentality. You think America's got what 17, 18, 20,000 nukes? Mm. Russia's got <laughs> pretty much the same. Britain's got 300. I think France has slightly less. Um, Canada, I believe. South Africa, India, Pakistan. I'm sure they could put enough ordnance in the sky to stop that fucking thing. Yeah. And then America might decide to join the party. Mm. North Korea. We probably have to give them the rockets, so that'd be a bit of an issue. <laughs> They'd probably end up nuking themselves, wouldn't they? Hmm. Yeah. Enough tests. When, when we can see it in the sky, now, then is that the fucking. That's not tr oh, I can't believe the entire rest of the world just went, yeah, alright, we'll trust eccentric, fucking, weirdly autistic Elon Musk with the weird hair. Well, they didn't do just a last ditch attempt. Hmm. And the UN were like, just not doing anything either. They were like, yeah. well, we're considering a multinational mission. And you're like, well, fucking do it then. That's the UN for them. All they well, do if is that was a talk. realistic movie, right? They would have been launching from Vengeance, Vanguard, all the V class well, bombers. Yeah. In real life, that wouldn't have happened because you would have had all of our subs that I know of, and our three we get nukes. Out of our atmosphere? Yeah, that's how they, they all go about the atmosphere. fire. They go up into the atmosphere, the warheads break off, take star navigation, they navigate from the stars to find the pinpoint accuracy location of where they're going, mm -hmm. and then they go... They have GPS too, don't forget that. Oh well, yeah, but they do their initial navigating from the stars at first, and it's all, yeah. it's all done, I used to have to yeah. learn about, I used to be a submariner for the listeners so I'm not talking shit I, I well, do know my stuff because I have uh, to learn it all well they do it by the stars where's the GPS they do they go above the GPS at that point they go out of orbit and then because they spin down into earth yeah they into ride earth, the earth, earth ride the earth don't they really? basically like there's nowhere in the world they can't hit their range astronomical <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they can hit everyone on the planet yeah. That's the beauty of nuclear submarines, they can be anywhere, isn't it? Yeah. You could be one part off Aberystwyth right now. Nobody would know. knows. No one knows. Russian subs of Aberystwyth, you heard it here first. Oh, just learnt something today, but every day is a school day. Yeah, mm. but no, um, that's what I mean. So the realism of that particular part of the film. Yeah, it's yeah. Obviously, it's it wouldn't have just been the bloody the Russians and the Chinese going, mm. oh, okay, let's let's, let's team up. It, it, they'd have all been like, well, we've all got nuclear subs. Boom, boom, boom. There would have been no explosions on land because no. you weren't going to fire from land. You're going to be in the ocean going... They still fire the land-based ones, are they? You, well, you would, but you'd certainly have silos. all of your sea, your sea bearing ones yeah. going as well. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh, I forgot about China. They look... <laughs> I don't forget about China having nukes. Exactly. So you'd have three massive nuclear powers instantly. Oh, I've got it as well too. Other than America firing them. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. We would never let that happen, clearly. No. But that's not the um, artistic license, is it? No. <laughs> so. I'm just saying it's a bit more... Yeah, I enjoyed it, though. It was good. It, it, it certainly made me think, yeah, that would happen. That and the president, the don't, look, the don't look up thing. Yeah, that I, I thought, yeah, they'd say that. It's not really believable. Fact. Yeah, yeah, very believable. I, maybe that's just you know a sign of my own lack of faith in humanity and society, though, or all of us lack of faith in society. I was just knowing corruption through governments and such. Mm. That's that's where the lack of trust comes in, isn't it? So, of course. Claire. Yeah, watch it. It's good. <laughs> it was gin have you had tonight? Uh, <laughs> Fucked up facts? Yeah, yeah, go on them. Can we have a theme tune then, please? Facts, facts, facts fucked up facts, 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 facts. The brain, the brain port is a device that allows blind people to see using their tongue. Why what? the fuck would you do what? that? The what? Brain port? Brain port is a device that allows blind people to see using their tongue. Okay. If you can put, if you can link the tongue and the brain... Surely you can just link the eyes. Well, no, you just put a Georgie the Forge visor on it, wouldn't you? That's what I was thinking. You'd Star Trek that shit? Yeah. <laughs> Why put it in their tongue? Just make them a fucking visor? Uh, 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 oh, I'm just looking at you. I'm just looking at you. Oh, mm. no, baby. Mm. <laughs> 
apparently he converts video images into electro-tactile impulses sent to the brain through an electrode attached to the tongue. Wow. So would you have to walk round with your tongue stuck out? I don't know. That's going to get you in a lot of fights. Mm. Yeah. And certainly completely revolting to the opposite sex. Or maybe more appealing if you've got a massive tongue. <laughs> Too massive though, because that's just a bit creepy. What if it's too. Gene Simmons? He's got a Gene Simmons-sized tongue. No. So it converts video images into electro-tactile impulses sent to the brain through an electrode attached to the tongue. So you'd still only see it in so your maybe, mind's eye. So maybe you don't need to have your mouth open. You've got like a camera somewhere recording, and it's converting the images. And sending it through and, the tongue. Uh, yeah, to, up to the brain. No, just, just Star Trek me that shit. Just put a visor on me. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's... I'm with you on that. Well, maybe they can't do that yet. This is pretty good, though, isn't it? Surely? No. What, no. you don't want blind yep. people to see? No, not with their tongue. No, it's, it's, it's against God. <laughs> no. No, no, no. No, no definitely, <laughs> definitely. If, people, if it can make blind people see, it's brilliant. But maybe, surely, maybe it is yeah. a visor sort of thing with cameras coming out like, like looking out of it with like a piece that just like attaches in through their mouth to their tongue and it would sort of look like you know just a little uh, wire or something I have no idea but I, I, obviously it's I'm amazing all for it. though isn't it yeah. obviously it's, yeah, yeah it is amazing but you know it's made me have eyes on them mm. Just because you want to like shit. replicate that shit. Just because you want to look like Geordie off Star Trek <laughs> I'm already halfway to Picard nah <laughs> Because of the board, this you know. Apparently, all board men look the same, don't they, Mike? That's right. Until I look like John Luke Picard. Yep. Fantastic. <laughs> Make it so. You also like sloth out of the Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> He's not bored. He is. He's not. Oh, yeah, he has a little, little tough. Oh, he does have a little tough, doesn't he? He does yeah. have a little tough. So your argument falls flat, my oh, friend. Shit. No, after 12 Carlin, though. <laughs> 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 oh, guys. I hate that fucking movie. Well, he does. Oh, I love that movie. I love it. Always have, always will. Awesome. Can't stand it. Only one in 15 people who have ever lived are alive now. It's not bad. One in 15. It's one in 15 people that have ever lived yeah. are alive now. So it just goes to show how large our population, population is. is. Yeah, right it now. is, isn't it? Because over the previous 100,000 years... It's yeah, it's boom, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think it was 500 million until the Middle Ages, wasn't it? Yeah, then the plague happened. I oh, know, that might have been Euro, to be fair. 500 million. Cause I, I thought it was the world. I don't know, actually. I can't remember the plague stats, so that's bugging me. That'll be an episode one day, the Black Death. Mm. Yeah, some like half of Europe died. I reckon they lost at least, there was at least 200 million in Europe. In 2006, a robot taste taster, whatever one of them is. No idea. Confirmed humans taste like bacon. Yeah. They always do say pork, yeah. I mean, if you are in a cannibal style situation, then you go for the buttocks first. That has kind of made me slightly more towards cannibalism because I am very partial to bacon. And a little bit of pork, mm. bacon, ham, <laughs> pork loin. Nah. Anything that buttock, yeah, whatever. I think in an airplane. What's that? Oh, that's the one where they crash in the mountains. Alive, the snow, alive, alive, yeah. In the alive situation, I'd consider it maybe. Yeah, but it's not going to taste like bacon then because it's frozen and you're trying to just chew a frozen bit of butter. Unless you have got fire, <laughs> I'd try and make a fire. You've got to try and make a fire and you've got to cook it. You can't just eat it raw, you'll just shit yourself. Di diarrhea, then die, 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 chopping bits off and just eating them in the end because they couldn't, they, they hadn't oh, got yeah. any. Maybe we had no fire. They had no fire, did they? Not in that shit. case, then you, not for a long, 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 long time. Such a depressing film. Yeah, it's, oh. it's not one I've thought, you know what? Gotta go watch back and watch Alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to cheer myself up. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> if I want to do that, I always put Ghostbusters on the original 1984. Yeah, man. That was on the other night. It's a class film. It's all right. <laughs> Fuck off. All right. It's all right. I wasn't massively into Ghost, but I thought the second one was better than the first. Second one's got its charms. I always wanted to be covering it in that much marshmallow. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just walking around eating it. You <laughs> mean it's demonic marshmallow? 
<laughs> Doesn't matter. Still tastes good. Toasted. Probably the best, actually, to be fair. <laughs> in your hair and everything. <laughs> According to a study from the University of Colorado and Harvard, growing potatoes decreases the likelihood of civil war. Oh, cracking. Everyone loves their chips. Yeah. So what the fuck is going on in Ireland? They Seriously? Look, look that good. is a shit study. Because, let's face it, Ireland like a bit of a civil war, don't they? And who, who makes the best potatoes? Ireland. So I think that's bullshit. The Irish <laughs> do have a stereotype for loving a potato. Let's not gloss over the potato famine, though. Yeah. Let's not gloss over that. I wasn't going to mention that bit, but they are notorious for very, very... They, they've got the perfect conditions for growing potatoes, basically. They have, yeah. Um, the way the, the weather, weather is there, very wet. So you're wet. challenging that fact, and you think they should do their study in, in Ireland? Oh, I think they should do that, yeah. But then again, <laughs> you've got to look at it as you've had these two factions fighting since before the potato was introduced to Ireland which I think it was Sir Walter Raleigh brought the potato back but so it's you look at 1550 something certainly didn't stop their civil war in it did not but still <laughs> no, that was they were fighting for before the potato was introduced so it's just like it didn't work no, that is a good, good little fact but yeah I just think if they'd done their study in Ireland the fact might have been a very different outcome it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a civil war it was a policing action for insurance purposes <laughs> mm. oh, can I finish on this one In ancient... please don't <laughs> I don't want to see you jizzing over that fact uh, <laughs> why should I read the fact in ancient Greece small penises were preferred to large ones well, you'd have been alright then mate. I know I was, I was born the wrong time a small penis symbolised self control and intelligence so all the control. all the top men I thought that people with big dicks were minus brutes basically so all the Spartans were hung then basically because they were minus brutes they were, they were clever in their own right but they were very much a warrior they were a warrior society weren't they whereas the Athenians were all tiny dicked you'd argue in that scenario I've been playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey again They've got penis envy, and they made that up just to make them feel better. No, that's why all the statues of ancient in ancient Greece have all got tiny dicks, because that's what they preferred. You mean the ones we let the Greeks keep, and the ones that aren't in the British Museum? Well, whatever. <laughs> probably because the ancient Greeks put it in fucking any hole oh, they did. possible. They did. They, they, probably, admire them for they it. probably liked smaller willies, because well, it was more comfortable in whatever hole they decide to want to put it uh, in. With anyone. I mean, exactly. Any age, pretty much. Animal. Yeah. Doesn't matter. They were well yeah. for it. Goats and that. Did they get a say in this? In these uh, stats? <laughs> nah, they just ordered themselves up and got on with it. <laughs> it is mental. The Greeks were fucking lunatics when it came to sex. And the Romans weren't far behind. And they just drew a line a bit more... Uh, like, let's not... Because you know, they didn't mind a bit of homosexuality. The Romans, they weren't that bothered about it. I don't think they were too fussed with bestiality, though, were they? They weren't about that, no. no. They dropped that. Yeah. They stole all the gods, but they dropped that. <laughs> <laughs> we love the gods, we'll have them, they're brilliant. We just rebrand them. Fucking the pigs, nah, you can keep that. <laughs> yeah. Pass. Fucking the goats, nah, we're not into that so much. We've got slaves. <laughs> don't need goats, we've got slaves. Do you know why? Because Velcro hadn't been invented then. Uh, Sheep and things, you know. <laughs> True. It wasn't as easy. They kicked. God, it's been a while since we had a sheep shagging joke. Oh. <laughs> right, and I think on that, on that note, bombshell. on that bombshell, I'm going to end the show. Thanks for listening. I've been Ben. Don't drink the flavour aid. Don't join a cult. You can follow us on Facebook at Cutting the Ball in, in the Post Through the Apocalypse, YouTube at Apocalypse Ball, and on SoundCloud at Cutting Through the Ball in the PTA. Yeah. Three for fucking three. Hey. I must be like a good luck charm or something. <laughs> Never leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks very much for listening. I've been Mike, thanks for listening. Peace out, may the force be with you. I've been Claire, keep an open mind, but not so open that it spills out your ears, guys. And I've been Pete, aim high, shoot low. Three rounds a minute in any weather. <laughs> <laughs>